Good morning. Welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church in San Jose on this fourth or fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. I'm Maylee Hughes, Rector, and we are delighted that you have joined us this morning and hope that you will fully participate in the service and responses and singing at home. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you and also with you let us pray set us free O God from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your son our Savior Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, 
mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Psalm today is Psalm 147. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our God and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious flavor. favor. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a report, a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a con- commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I become as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I, became, I become as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Jesus according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. 
and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. They went out Xiu 治好了许多还各样病的人耶稣对他们说：“我们可以往别处去，到临近的乡村。”我也好在那里传道，因为我是为这事出来的。于是，在加利利全地进了会堂，传道赶鬼。The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. In last week's gospel portion from Mark, Jesus made his first appearance as a rabbi, a teacher, at the synagogue and astounded everyone with his authority. Then he astounded them even more by casting out an unclean spirit of a man who was there. This takes place on the Sabbath, but we don't hear anyone complaining. The implication is that there's a difference between the exorcism of a demon and the healing of someone who is sick. The subtitle of today's gospel is Healings and Exorcisms, which supports the idea that they are different things. Two chapters later, Jesus will heal the man with the withered hand in the synagogue on the Sabbath, and it will lead to the Pharisees starting to conspire with Herodians on how to destroy him. In Mark's gospel, there are 31 occurrences of the exorcism of demons and unclean spirits, and 11 occurrences of healings. Most are in the first half of the gospel when Jesus is establishing his identity. It works out to almost two per page. Today's gospel portion begins with what is usually translated as the healing of the mother-in-law of Simon Peter. Like many women in the Gospels written by men, she is nameless. I'll call her Belle. In French, Belle-Mère means mother-in-law. It's still the same day. It's still the Sabbath, though Belle's healing takes place in a private house. But is it a healing? Most translations say Jesus helped her up. Our translation says he lifted her up. Brother Silas Henderson and others point out that the Greek word used is the same word that the angel will use at the tomb to describe Jesus being lifted up, which is to say, 
resurrected. It's possible that a better translation, such as in the Common English Bible, would be, he went to her, took her by the hand, and raised her up. Bell may not have been literally dead yet, but this, at the start of Jesus' ministry, is meant by Mark to be a story of a resurrection moment. But what is Bell raised up for? I'll come back to this. There was a lot happening in this tiny 11-verse portion of Mark. The raising of Bell is only two verses of it. What, I thought, is the most significant point here? Is it that Jesus healed people? I just explained how often that occurs in Mark's gospel. Is it about how Jesus challenges rules and prejudice? He doesn't just heal Bell on a Sabbath, but does so by touching her raising her by the hand. This is a shocking intimacy in the culture of the time. Is it about Jesus silencing the demons because they recognized who he was and Jesus wasn't ready for that to be revealed yet? Is it about the part where Jesus goes off by himself to pray after a crazy night of healing and casting out demons for a whole town's worth of people that he took a break to refuel is it that he then picked up sticks and left? At the end of today's gospel, Jesus says, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And off he goes on his first preaching tour. Or is it about all these things taken together? In an article in the Christian Century in 2009, the Reverend Lawrence Wood wrote, the Christian church was born with Simon's mother-in-law. I see the birth of a church pattern here, and it's not even Pentecost yet. The church started out as a relational church, meeting in the homes of followers. Growth was one person at a time, usually a relative. Simon Peter's brother, his wife and mother-in-law, and so on. St. Paul brought relatives into the church. Much of Holy Family's early growth was through relatives coming here from the Philippines, Mexico, and elsewhere. Those present in Peter's house spent their time in fellowship and listening to the teachings of Jesus. We have healing going on in this gospel. Though we don't currently have healing stations, we have done that in the past. But healing represents more than physical healing. It represents restoring people to wholeness, reconciling them with the community, helping to free them from personal demons, helping people to experience personal transformations that are resurrections of a sort. We exercise this in worship through prayers of the people, communal confession, and the peace, which we do as a connected set of actions before we proceed to the offertory and Eucharist. What about Bell? We've already heard one example of how translations affect our understanding of the gospel. We all know that words can have more than one meaning. More than one theologian has noted how the translation of a word from the Greek tends to be different when the subject is a woman instead of a man. Egeiron is helped up when applied to a woman, raised up when applied to a man. So what was Bell raised up for? Most translations say that it was so she could wait on the guys and serve them a meal. Many translations like ours just say that she began to serve them. The Greek word, friends, is diakonoi. It would be translated differently if the story were about Peter's father-in-law. Does this word sound familiar? It does mean serve, but it does not describe menial labor. labor. The early church used this same word when a man was raised up and made a deacon. Diakonoi, diakono, deacon. It's a verb. Bell was deaconed. Jesus serving the disciples at the Last Supper is described with the same verb as it is for the angels who attend or deacon Christ during the temptation in the wilderness. It is the same meaning in the most commonly used dismissal in the church. 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And no one responds with, not me. We respond with, thanks be to God. Instead of she began to serve, the Orthodox Jewish Bible says Bell began to function as a mesharitet, a female minister. Her ministry was not necessarily to prepare and serve the meal herself, but to see that it was prepared, tables got set, and everyone got fed. She would remain in Capernaum to keep the new community going, including providing for teaching and fellowship, while both male and female disciples went out on the preaching tours. So do you see the pattern? In our worship, we have fellowship, teaching, healing, as in restoring membership to the community, to wholeness, freed from personal demons, and a communal meal overseen by a deacon, and being sent out to serve. And just as we always remember the resurrection in the liturgy of the Eucharist, there's a resurrection story here too. It just happens to have taken place that same day in front of the disciples. I had my own encounter with demons this week. I finally took my Christmas decorations down. I could not find a work of art created by my grandmother mother, that I had safely stowed for the season. When I should have been doing sermon prep, I was possessed. I frantically searched for hours. How could I misplace something so precious? I was prepared to tell Manley and Ruth that unless I found it, there would be no sermon. I would be busy tearing my home apart. Fortunately for them, in the morning, I was restored to wholeness. I found it and am able to deacon for you today. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Great are you, O Lord. Hallelujah. O God, your Son Jesus came into the world to proclaim your message. Give your church, the body of Christ, that same passion to be all things to all people, that we might show forth your salvation. Great are you, O Lord. Hallelujah. O oh God, you cast the wicked to the ground and lift up the lowly. Protect and defend those living under oppressive rulers and those living under oppression of hunger, poverty, and war. 
Great are you, O Lord. Hallelujah. O God, you prepare rain for the earth and make grass to grow on the plains and hills. Provide food enough to support all the creatures that inhabit the earth. Great are you, O Lord. Hallelujah. O God, there is no limit to your wisdom. Your understanding is unsearchable. Bless all teachers and students. Sustain our school systems and universities. Bless your people with knowledge. We give thanks for those celebrating anniversaries and birthdays this week, including Jennifer, Hugh, and those we now name silently aloud or in the comments. Great are you, O Lord. Hallelujah. O God, you give power to the faint and strengthen the powerless. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you heal those with diseases and set free those in bondage. Heal the brokenhearted and care for the wounded. We remember Katie, Lois, Phyllis, uh, Roger, Dan, Hugh, Wesley, Ming, Donna, John, Captain Austin Patrick, Davison serving the church and people in Bogota, Colombia, those in the US and throughout the world infected with COVID-19, those affected by the glacier disaster in the Himalayas, those in the U.S. and throughout the world, unemployed and underemployed, the houseless, and those we now name silently, aloud, or in the comments. Great are you, O Lord. Hallelujah. O God, you are everlasting, the creator of the ends of the earth. We entrust to your tireless care those who have died, especially Marion, mother of Jeannie, Lavoie, the victims of COVID-19 in the U.S. and throughout the world, those feared dead in the glacier breakaway in India, and those now named silently, aloud, or in the comments. Great are you, O Lord. Hallelujah. These are our prayers. Receive them in your mercy. And grant us, O oh Lord, your peace, your peace that passes our human understanding. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning again, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope you will stick around and join us for a Zoom coffee hour after the service, and I believe the link is right there in the feed. Also this afternoon, there is evening prayer in Mandarin at 515 on the YouTube channel. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have morning prayer at 1015 on our YouTube channel as well. So there are many opportunities for you to join us in prayer. On the 17th will be Ash Wednesday, and we will have a noonday service, and we will offer um, ashes for you to come by and pick up and to administer them on you and your, your family. Um, yes, that's, that's absolutely legal to do. It does not take an ordained person. They will be blessed. Um, so I hope that you will take advantage of that and come by and pick them up. We'll have a table out there, a little more instructions as we get closer. So um, please give generously 
as God is generous to us, walk in love as Christ loved and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice unto God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you, 
In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, Francis, Claire, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Our Father, Father, who who art art in in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us us keep the the feast. feast. Alleluia. In union, O Lord, with the faithful of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you, and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.